part two of the first case. Uh, amnesia? Oh, we told her. I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little, a Maggie kick should be all you need. I think that'll give us more amnesia. Uh, no, no, no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, monkey ass, to say the very least. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honoured to. Ah, uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name then. And then I can tell you about me. No, no, no. That's okay, really. I think you know... Yeah, I think we know her name by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix, right? What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember. Phoenix is an idiot. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back, and maybe it'll help. Hmm? This is a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? <laughs> what a shit name. <laughs> okay, there are some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Why did he write his number on the back? I guess for now we should stop talking about me. And start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with the cell phones, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention centre, sir. Hurry up then and tell me. This might be very important. Okay, roger. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6pm. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. It's the same phone Phoenix was holding before. All of a sudden the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. Yeah, Blue Badger Jumper. Gumshoe's Blue Badger became mainstream. We agreed to meet up at 6pm. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Hmm. So where is the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is that the phone in my pocket? You mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know. But if my eyes lit up... Uh, what? <gasps> Maya! Maya's back! Yes! Okay, that's actually really good. You're so mean. I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left. But our phone didn't go off. Oh! Oh! I think I know. I think I know what happens. 
I'm going to take my crazy K3 prediction right now that the little jerk, snob jerk, was the killer. He wanted to get his phone back from them for whatever reason. Who knows? He might have been trying to hide his porn collection or something. I don't know. And he killed Dustin to, to get it back. But he failed because Maggie had it. Maggie gives it to us. He calls it, wakes us up, and whacks us to steal it back. But I don't reckon he's stolen our phone because Maya would have, like, our phone would have been ringing. Because if he didn't, st if he stole the right phone, and this is our phone actually, because it, it looks like Phoenix's phone from the previous game. If this was really Phoenix's phone, Maya would have, we would have heard it. So we don't have our phone on us. I think he's taken our phone by accident. Ah, now who in the heck is this? Let me guess. I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And a good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh, and what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra-decisive, super-important evidence. Here you are, Nick. The thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kinda tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in... There's a group of con artists. I think these guys are members of that group. Interesting. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me. Hmm. Where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers are in the memory of that phone Maggie found. There we go. Hmm, so that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. <laughs> um, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to court immediately. Oh, oops. Guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. Wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Yeah. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I ask that the court might be a little lenient on. There is no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Yeah, snobby rich kid. Please state your name with the court, witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who is taking a walk. My daddy has all these fancy boats. D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and coloured me wrongly. 
Sure, I suppose calling me a univet I he's young windy old bag. Yeah, he's pretentious as frick. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. What is he? A human chatterbox? Oh, it's so good to have Maya back. Uh, I have to question him. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. That's enough. Your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. I I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Oh man. I forgive you. Alright, I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso, with a PhD in drifting as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. Ahem, Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a... strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am been by no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with my mummy. Yeah, if you... <laughs> Even Winston Payne's sick of it. Anyway, please testify to this court what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again. Taking a walk, you know you. What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past six. Yep. All of a sudden, a police officer drop falls from above right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana. There was no banana. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my clients? You mean Maggie? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then there can only be then that can only mean one thing. That guy's lying. You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. Yeah. Hmm. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. Instantly I'm gonna jump to the banana. Because he surely means this. Yeah. Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. Oh, what an idiot. And that's where you'd be wrong. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? What? Wh what? A baseball glove? Doesn't it look delicious? Give her a bite. <laughs> nom nom nom. Delicious glove. Th that's... Th that's not... It's a... Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness. <laughs> this witness loves bananas. 
it, it must be he has bad eyesight because these other two are just jokes. <laughs> You're out. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? What? How? Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, I think it's a very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. You, 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 you're one of those people. Yes, I know what you mean. You're like one of those people who were. Oh God, Wendy old bag rants. Yak yak yak. And that is why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. They're both twenty-two hundred. That's terrible. My God, that's horrible. Yikes! Yikes! Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them. How about when you witness the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? <laughs> How about it, witness? You, you are an unrelenting, evil man. You're like those people who were. Uh, there we go. More rants. God, this kid's terrible. What a terrible criminal. Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at that time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the crime scene and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. Oh. He strangles himself. But the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm. Witness, please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. I'm sorry, Payne, but no, if he can't even tell that a glove falling down right in front of him is a glove, then he could not see a witness nine feet away. Y yes your honor now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next, in the moments after you witnessed the crime. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as, I, as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is the murderer. Okay, so he's explained away his bad vision as she didn't leave. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. I don't think I saw a contradiction. Jeez, I'm getting tired. Objection! Yeah. <laughs> This game sometimes. This is Rise from the Ashes all over again. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28pm. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There is clearly a 15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? Ack! I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15 minute gap. Grr. The, the witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would have be a little dazed. Objection. 
15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Ah! Mr. Wellington. Y yes Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? This is her. Answer the question. I, uh, t telephone, uh, I mean. Spit it out. I, I was searching for a phone, but okay, and this is where I point out that there was a freaking phone booth right there. A phone booth? You mean, you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions, as if you're trying to open all the layers of a mat- of a ma matrioshoka doll? I've butchered that horribly. You must think you're really something special. Okay, comrades. Witness. I, I lost my cell phone. There. Are you happy? You lost it? You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard of up oh, is Wendy old bag raving? Enough. Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost the just crazy case ram theory rights. Nick, that cell phone, could it be? You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Question further. Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone right now? <laughs> what are you getting all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See, here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe that was his. Oh, this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we've cleared this issue up. Yeah, we're not that lucky. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his search for a phone. Nah, we're going to object to that. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for a witness to search for a phone. How dare you! You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone. Because there's one right next to the crime scene. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo? Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. No! It's... it's a phone booth. That is... ah, oh, the banger! That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? No! <laughs> Diddles and Wi-Fi crump. Order, order. But what does reporting the crime a little late prove for the defense? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet his phone, this phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. I was right! But Maggie said that he was going to return it to him. So there was no reason for him to kill- Okay, my theory's stuffed then. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. 
Hmm. But if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else? Was he... Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. <gasps> oh. Oh, whoa, whoa. I think I know. I think I know. But, but again, I'm not going to say it. Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing in those 13 minutes? There is only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Look. I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Because these are his glasses. Yes, I was right. Mr. Wellington. What? Don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? Yeah, it matches his colour scheme too. Uh, well, where did you find... Uh, I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. But these glasses are in fact yours. We got him. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? I think we got him now. Order, order. Now, wait a second, hold on. I, I, I didn't confess or confirm anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and searched frantically from them. What he didn't realize was that that was that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Of course. That is precisely what I'm doing. This cornered theme isn't as good. Oh, oh, ah. Oh, that's it. I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. It's great in a different way. Yeah. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. You think it works really well at times in the game? Yeah, it's Maggie Bird. <laughs> Kappa? Oh, true, she is. Gumshoe already has his eyes on her. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah. This is so exciting, watching you work again. Yeah, Maya's back. Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Maya's bay. Craven. Order, order. Your Honor, the defense, the defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Y yes, that's, that's right. I, I, I'm no criminal. Daddy said so. Th th this third rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. <laughs> what? Why? That, that, that's easy, um, uh, For example, there's, um, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Y yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? Well, we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. 
but, 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 wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would the person know her name was Maggie, uh, Maggie? There, that is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. Ah, I forgot. Yeah. Because there was a way. Because Maggie called the person whose phone was stolen. It'd be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now, will the defense please present its case? How could this witness have known the defendant's name? She got in contact, so she obviously introduced herself as Maggie. Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realised you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try and find it by calling it? Why you? How did you? Your Honour, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think that there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honour. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And? She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there, um, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. There it is, so he heard Maggie but didn't know how it was spelt. That was when you learned that the, her, that was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Um, um, ugh. But you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? My client's name is Maggie, but the name that was... See, this is confusing when I'm just saying Maggie and Maggie. It was misspelled. This is a mistake you, that could only occur if, you, if all you knew was how her name sounded. Eek! Order, order. But your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is? It's very simple, Your Honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. It's a sigh. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That, that is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm. Mr. Wright. Your Honor? Can you explain what motive this witness could have had? We got that lawyer crap on you. <laughs> it's very simple, Your Honor. Uh, I'm not following. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to this court proof that the witness had a motive. Okay, what? Fine. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. The cell phone? In the memory of the phone, the defendant found... So, I could have also presented the con list. In the memory of the phone, the defendant found was a list of certain phone numbers. You... You looked up all those numbers? Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist's group. What? What? Get con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is worse crime than murder. You, you're one of those people. You're like those co- Ah, here's a rant. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think any of you know what it's like to be such a refined man as me? 
Your Honor, this this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Objection overruled. I love how none of them made the connection that he has his phone. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't it obvious? The witness is a member of the group. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! All of your friend's phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. N no, this, this is too much. Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um, I... I got you now. I, 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 that I... Oh, we got him! That police officer. Ah, oh, freaking Payne. Your, your honor. What is it, Mr. Payne? Your honor, th this is, this is unjust. You've said that before. Fuck off, Payne, and let him, let him have his breakdown. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. Yeah, he is a pain in our ass. But please, please, let's think about the content of that phone call. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can beat up and I can give this back. Yeah, this is why I didn't think it was the phone. Because Maggie was going to give it back to him anyway. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Miss Bird to get his phone back. So this is probably when I say that Dustin was in uniform. If Justice for All is going to be like this, I might not like it as much as the first one. Why then would he need to kill anyone? Hmm, that is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Hmm, if you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if we think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Like a cop when he had his phone full of con artist numbers. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Well, I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well, well then, Mr. Wright. What was this something that didn't agree with the witness? Yeah, so now it's this. What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The, the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his day right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! The girl that picked up my phone is with a policeman. He couldn't have known that they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on, his, on the phone. And he went into a panic, is what you're saying. Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, um, I'm thinking. Hmm, it seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's th what's that supposed to mean? The evidence. Evidence. Ah, uh, and this guy's really creepy. Oh, you've been doing is waving around and talking about is that suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone this. Suspicious can't group that. They're all on that phone. 
But who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence? You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier. This phone I lost, I've already found it. You don't even have the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can't be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? Yeah, this case is busted. It feels good to see you squirm. Hmm. We do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. Y Your Honor, this is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Crazy Ram theory was right, I'm pretty sure. Hmm, the cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be. Hmm, maybe. Fingerprints on the phone? I've got it. We should check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie... <gasps> Why? I what? He said there was sand all over it, so... No! Phoenix! Wiped it. I wiped it. Pretty thoroughly, too. Fuck. Yeah, god damn it. Phoenix is a two-head. And he's also a two-havad. <laughs> it's oh so much fun watching third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Ah, oh, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see. Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched, because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You've got to be joking. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? Yeah, I know exactly what's going on, and I think we've got him. <laughs> oh, you are too much. And of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Because he whacked us. He whacked us and took it. But he didn't take his phone, because we have his phone still, the two head. I, I, oh my god, the amnesia's gone. Oh, looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. Whack. So that's when. What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Hey, Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's going to get off scot-free. I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. Wright. If you cannot prove who the, who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis, and therefore no power. Looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? You didn't, Phoenix. You've won. Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Yeah. Shoo. I am? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> if that will be all, I'll have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at that ultra-fancy ultra restaurant on the upper side of town with Daddy. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, 
Bon appetit. Red light. What am I supposed to do? It is never wait and see. Please wait, Your Honor. All right, Nick. She's off to have lunch with Gant. <laughs> oh, because Gant snuck out. That was... I still can't believe that. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Y Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well. But this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know what the answer is. Crazy K3M theory, it seems, was right. I only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything, it's over for your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, you're right. I'm sure you are well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Pay? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Oh, last chance that it doesn't take out all our health. Nice voiceover. <laughs> Thanks, Lanterns. It's this, because he doesn't have his phone. Oh God, he doesn't have his phone. He has our phone. Why thank <laughs> the judge? <laughs> Why thank you? How nice. Here, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we've got the judge's <laughs> business card. <laughs> Here, please have one of mine. <laughs> uh, it got added to the court record. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time <laughs> to be exchanging business cards. Is it actually a it's in the court record. <laughs> Your Honor, there is something very important about that card. And that card is the back of the card, because that's where our number is. This card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm? You write your cell phone number on the back, but... But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Yeah, this game is great. Right now, the court is still in session. It's okay, you'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We are going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. <laughs> of all the idiotic, stupid things to... Steel Samurai. Phoenix has that. There! It's on him! Oh, oh, what? Why is my phone? And what is with this stupid sounding ringtone? Mr. Wellington, you <laughs> diddles. Hmm, how strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. Y you're... Ah! No, 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 it can't be. By the way, before I forget, she fell asleep. <laughs> By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain any further except to say, when you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. Yes. 
<laughs> we got him. Oh, what is it? There we go. Oh, shit. There we go. Rip Richard Wellington or whatever his first name was. So that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He is a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. Yeah, have fun in prison. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artists group, Death by Nokia. He has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding. It's Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Ah, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Yes! No last minute objections. Nice Peter Law, I'm trying to do the judge. That is all. This court is adjourned. Ah, oh, Pog, we did it. It's going to be one of the only times we finish a whole case in a single day. I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I'm so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. Now, if, if that tutorial case was any indication, I think this game is going to be harder than Ace Attorney 1. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me. Oh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the... Whoa! Yikes! I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. I never won or even tied at a game of tic tac How? My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the goddess of misfortune. And then at the academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. She's fitting for gumshoe then, I will say that much. Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch onto those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try and help. Ah, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently too, sir. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand and, before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. <laughs> oh, Maggie. She's gumshoe. She is honestly female gumshoe. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. But that's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault. Dustin's death. Your head being all messed up. Ah, uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm going to find a new life for myself, starting now. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole, a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of moose fortune is only a name. You bet, I'm gonna make it, I promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Y yeah, that's the spirit. Well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks, you take care of yourselves too. 
Your kids mock you with everyone in chess. Oh, lanterns. Oh, what a horrible day. I've gotten my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but... Phoenix! Is Maya really the only person he does not remember? What? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Ah, uh, there we go. Gumshoe. Yeah, Detective Gumshoe. He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases. But he's also been a good ally during others. The Judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. This person... I haven't got a clue. Yeah, I said it at the start. I said I'd be surprised if normal Phoenix could even remember pain. They met once. He seems to know me, but maybe he's mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> uh, and this girl, Maya? You, you finally remembered. Aww. This is Maya Faye, my assistant. That's right, I have so many unforgettable memories about her. And she's back. For example, it's a Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me. Don't tell me you've missed me. Ah, uh, well, yes. Of course we have Maya. You were gone for months. Nick went into a depression. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now. So it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick. Let's go to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back into my life. Hmm? And that story... That story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. So this is the story of Maya coming back. It's getting uncle levels of creepy. Reunion and turnabout. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. If you want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to see these recorded live, make sure to check me out on Twitch at Kath at Kathram. And if you want updates on videos and streams, make sure to check me out on Twitter at Kath underscore Ram. Bye.